Wait, wait. I'm happy I'm alive. Are you, do you, are you happy because we are living? Are you happy? Are you happy because I am living? You want to live long? Huh? Like Abraham. That's the message the, whole, the Holy Spirit gave me. So, take it seriously. I was sitting praying. The Holy Spirit told me that this message, some people will doubt it. Are you hearing me? If you doubt it, you love death. You are running away from the work God has given to you to do. The Holy Spirit revealed the secret of Satan in America to me. I want to share with you. Billy Graham was 90-something and was preaching the gospel. While the young preachers in America were dying, I don't want to call their names. And he was about 100. God has not called you and me to die early. Amen. Just like I told you here, I'm not hurry to go to heaven because there is nothing to be done than praising God, eating and dancing. Is it true? No Satan there. No demons there. But there is much work here. I thank God for bringing Apostle Arome Osai. Is your father alive? What are your mother? Hey, it's alive. Why are you taking me to go and see her and pray for her? Because she has done a wonderful thing. I want you to know that everybody has something to do for the end time if you are born again. What God has given to you is not ordinarily gone. It's a jet bomber. A bulldozer. So you must make up your mind that you have it and it is those things are not given to us to fight ourselves as many preachers are confused now. Instead of fighting demons, they are fighting themselves. That was what killed the first revival. Fighting yourself. Why? Because you don't know your enemy. You don't know the strategy of the enemy. I told him, all the people who started Pentecostal with me, no one is living. By me, I will leave. <laughs> Do you know why I will leave? Because God spoke to me and he told me to ask him how many years I want to live. Listen. I didn't know much I say, God, you have already laid down the years of living, 120. Then the Holy Spirit said, do I want the blessing of Abraham? I say, oh, yes, I have claimed it. And then he said, if I have claimed the blessing of Abraham, how many of you are hearing me? <laughs> and then he said, if I have claimed the blessing of Abraham, what are the years? What are the years? I say, I have no claim. He say, claim 170 years. I claimed it many years back. Every day I repeat it. Every day I claim 175 years. If Jesus tarries. And then he said, I should ask him about divine health. 
I ask. Then he gave me condition. He said, if I will hear him and obey him, what I have asked, I will have. The day I heard you giving wonderful and wonderful testimony for us and terrible testimony to the kingdom of darkness, you would have, you would have, you not, been, you would have not been doing what we are doing now if you agree to die that time. Yeah? Who can remember what he told us? Do you want to die young? <laughs> God sent me to his house. I've never told anybody. When his wife delivered a baby, was it up to one week? She, she was lying there. And then the Holy Spirit opened my mouth to prophesy over him and the baby and the family. And one of them was a long life, claiming the years of Abraham. You remember? I, I cannot say what he can tell you, what God told me to, to tell him. Now, is this happening? Is it happening? You know, the Bible has been given to us just a microscope, X-ray, and no, it's computer. Yes, you go there, you see yourself. How many of you saw me sitting with him there? I was confessing the sins. This what I'm talking now should have been three days ago. And the Holy Spirit did not allow me to sleep. I want you to know that the Bible has been given to you and me to claim it now. Claiming everything, did you? you? Many people spoke here. If you want to follow God, then study the Bible. Just like uh, my brother Gideon. What is your father's name? <laughs> you know, any time he stands to talk, I use my brain to tape it. <laughs> I am living, number one, the covenant with God in the blood of Jesus. Satan cannot overthrow the blood of Jesus. Demons cannot overthrow the blood of Jesus. The first man I prayed for who came to me was my son, Evangelist. Shala <laughs> Uka. Look at him and his wife. This is the message. The Holy Spirit told me that there is a group of demons going around the world, even with unbelievers, <clears throat> and they are entered into the church. Telling people that you have finished your work, go. That is the message. Don't agree to die when you have never done anything. If you ask Apostle Arome Usai, he will tell you that. What he wants to do, he has never done it. Is it true? I hope I'm not lying. <laughs> Somebody came with prophecy towards the end of the 70s and told me that God said, I has finished the work, let me go. Early 80s, when I came to open the Church of God Mission in Makudi here, one Edoma lady was my assistant pastor. One morning, she just came to me that she dreamed that I gave a last holy uh, communion. It was wonderful, and I passed away. <laughs> I see it's a lie.
<laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> I told her, you are fighting God. Your, your, I mean, your dream is it's a demon's dream. He's fighting God. How? Because God already told me how many years I will live. So by that time, I was not, was I, I, I was not even up to 70s. And she told me that uh, that week I will die. <laughs> Please, if you will allow God to take control over your body, demons cannot do you anything. You remember the day I stood here and I asked Satan to come and kill me. Did he come? <laughs> no, I am standing here. I am not standing here. Do you, do you know that Satan is looking at me? Do you know what Satan is doing? Because when God called me, he told me that he has made me a caterpillar in Isaiah, in a dream. When I woke up, I read the book, I mean the Bible. Later, he said he's jumping from caterpillar to a bulldozer. And then I composed a song. I am a winner, a demon's chaser. I'm a bulldozer in Jesus' name. I am a winner, a demon chaser. I'm a bulldozer in Jesus' name. I'm a winner. Everybody sing. I'm a I'm a bulldozer in Jesus' name. I'm a winner and demon chaser. I'm a bulldozer in Jesus' name. Satan is batting his finger. Demons are batting their fingers. I came here, was it in December? When Satan mobilized demons in the whole world that I should die before December. You remember when I came, I called, he called me, we hugged here. People have been calling me from many countries in the world that I should show them the secret of my living. Apart from Saudi Arabia and China and mm, India, they have never called me. <laughs> now look at David says, God, if I die, will I praise you? He said, it's good to live. I will live and praise God. I have a calling uh, tune uh, song in my phone many years back. I'm not afraid of tomorrow because God is in control. God is in control from the first day I fell into my mother's womb. Last night I was just worshiping God, thanking him and weeping. A sound to a powerful priest of the devil. I was going to take over from him. 
He died in 1948, March ending. And that was the year I came to school. You want to live long, I told you that day. The master of sin is, I mean, of death is sin. This man has been running from death. <laughs> the apostle, your father, and in the law, or spiritual father. He has been running from death. What is he running for? He ran, he's running away from sin. He doesn't want to die. But he's running away from sin. You people are chasing sin. Some of you are chasing sin. And when you are chasing sin, you are chasing death. I prayed for this conference. I thank God my prayers were answered. I told him. Anybody who is going home empty, that is his, his own or her own. What God has done, this conference is the heart of God. This conference is the heart of God, I'm telling you. That's what the Holy Spirit do. Because the power of a Christian to live is prayer. It's prayer. I'm living because I can pray. Oh, I, I was able to pray. And I, I can pray. And since I can remember in 1949, I started dealing with demons. Till today. No pastor, no teacher. The Holy Spirit was my teacher. Till today. So you have to make up your mind that you know what to do. Let me say this and pray for you. Don't agree to die young. And don't allow the, the demon to kill you. John chapter 15. If you are not bearing fruit, mm, cut. Go and read John chapter 15. And don't allow demons of doubt. If you doubt God and doubt the Bible, that is where the devil will get you. Are you married? You are married. The Bible says, love your wife as yourself. Is it also? No. Are you a woman? You are married. You have to honor your, your, your husband. Listen to her. Just like the church is worshiping Jesus. That is the law of life. Please, don't die young. God has never called you to die young. And don't fear death. Don't fear Satan. Don't fear demons. Don't fear witches and wizards. Don't fear occultic demons, occultic people. Don't fear malamis and demons and everything that is of the devil. You are in the kingdom. What we have received in this uh, conference is enough to keep us for 1,000 years. Yes. During the, uh, one of the revivers, one uh, old woman caught fire of the Holy Spirit. So he prayed and he turned the, pray, the prayer into song.
sweet ah ah oh prayer sweet ah oh prayer that calls me from the world of care that beats me up my father strong makes all my wants and wishes known in seasons of this grace and grief my soul has often found relief and often escaped the tempter's names by the written sweet hour of prayer. When you make the hour of prayer or hours of prayer to be sweet, the Holy Spirit will honor. You come to my house, you will see two chairs. God instructed me towards the end of the 70s. One for Jesus, one for the Holy Spirit. The moment I kneel down, that is my altar. The moment I kneel down and put my hands in the two chairs, I am already in the throne of God. <laughs> like Gideon was teaching me. Prayer will change your body. Yes. And the prayer will also renew your body. As I said, those who wait upon the Lord will do what? Huh? What will they be? Uh -huh. Please, from this conference, what you have received, go and make a booklet and share with people. That is a revival. The song I sang one stanza now. That was the song that the Holy Spirit gave us in 1972. Every Friday, crying to God. Every Saturday, crying to God in the night. Singing this song, lying on the ground. I mean, on the ground, rolling and weeping, four of us. See how you are plenty. We were only four from NKST. You pastors, apostles, we were all from NKST. And that fire, the NKST rejected it. And God told me, take this fire out. Start Pentecostal in Boko. Mm -hmm. Our leader is late. Some of them, I don't know where they are. So when God has called you, ask him what he wants you to do. Oh, the weapon he has given to you, then it will be better. How many of you want to live long? Put on your hand. Now, when I started teaching this, Abraham's blessing, people rejected me. Some people are quoting Psalm. Prayer of Moses. It was time for those useless people to go. Because the time was short. So the, the God was just wiping them away. Go and ask the Holy Spirit. He will tell you what I'm telling you now. So they were dying like fowl. And then Moses started crying to God and wrote that psalm. People were not reaching 100 years again. They were dying at the age of 70 and 80, isn't it? Uh -huh. That's why Moses, go and see that. That is the prayer of Moses. Some people said is God has reduced the year. Even Kenneth Gemma wrote his book, one of his books, he said that. But God has never changed 120 years that he pronounced. 
But when Abraham was so faithful and so obedient, Abraham had favor with God. And God allowed him to pass the mark of 120. 175. He saw 180. All right. By faith, he is our father. And Galatians 3.14 says his blessing has become our own. You pastors, I'm talking to you. Please. If God has called you and you have made a covenant with God and agreement with God, or a vow, keep it. Every day, go to remind yourself. I told people in 70, um, I think around 75, when I was preaching, I told them that I'm not going to die young. I will live long. I told them, uh, a year of 120, I will still live. And I know that if Jesus tarries, I will live that 175. And God, who did it for Abraham, will do for you Amen. by faith. Everybody, make up your mind. You are out of sin. Then if you are out of sin, you are out of death. If you are out of sin, you are out of death. This is the message. Please, I am saying it again. God does not want us to die young. Last week, somebody was, one lady was talking to me. And uh, she, I asked her to give me or to tell me how old I am. She looked at me. She said, I may be, I may be 72 years. Uh-huh. But May 20, did you see my, my birthday? Huh? How many years? But that one, I don't know. My grandchildren went and announced it. My grandchildren. Me, I don't know when I was born. When I am more than that. <laughs> That God who is keeping you will keep you. I'm not, I hope I'm not wasting your time. So make up your mind from today. As you go back, just tell God, this is what I have brought to you now. Sign it. God sign my years. And about how many years ago, I wrote a letter to him. I said, I want to fly like Elijah. And I am waiting. <laughs> Amen. Few prophets from outside and in Africa, they called me and told me. They, some of them, they did not know me, mother. The Holy Spirit told them that, uh, I am not going to die. I will fly. And I have never told them. So make up your mind. Is ask you shall receive. Seek you will find. Apostle, come. Go play the anointing. Please play. <laughs> Go play the anointing. Okay. <laughs> As you see this man, he will be the one to open the door for the devil to kill him before his years. But God has already signed a long life for him. <laughs> and it is good, you too, you ask God to sign. This Conference has promoted him. 
I want you to clap. Shout! Amen. And if you love him, every day pray for him. Every day you do what? So that he will accomplish what God has given to him. I have been coming to meet him. Not that he has invited me. Have you invited me? <laughs> Do you know why I'm here? The Holy Spirit told me the, the ministry he has given to me is the same ministry with my ministry he, he, he has given to me. It's out to revival and I am out to revival. That's why I'm here. And the Holy Spirit told me to operate like Jesus. Wherever the right thing is going on, that's you. That's why I am here. Supporting the ministry. And the fire is just at the door. The fire is what? Clap for Jesus. And you are carrying this fire back to your places. Yeah. And it's going to be a real fire. God told me that this revival that is coming now, any Christian who will stand at the gate to delay or to do whatever is going to pass away. And this revival that is coming, many, many Christians will die. Many Christians will what? It's not me. Yes. Because they have become problems to God. You remember the, the, the last meeting we came here? He, well, he gave the name of the church. I mean, what, did, what was the name I gave to the church? I told you that the church is in coma. You remember? <laughs> the church is in coma. That's why there is no noise again. But he is not in common with his people. So they are making noise. <laughs> they are walking. God is doing a new thing. So as you are joining him, make up your mind. This is my end. I am joining him. We are going to pray corporate amount him. Everybody put up, I mean, put two hands on your head. You pray, then I will end. Lord, we thank you for the privilege that you have given unto us to witness this great moment of Zion's glory. How that you will make a little one become a thousand. How that you will make a small one become a strong nation. How that you will bring to pass the glory of the later house. With all his splendor, with all his authority, with all his power, to be an adequate witness of your resurrection. Thank you for these great days. And we commit ourselves to facilitate that which you intend to do. Let your mighty hand of protection rest over everyone that is in agreement with this prayer tonight. Yeah. We banish the spirit of death in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. We have no covenant with death. 
our portion is not with death. The merchandise that we travel with is the merchandise of life. So we live because he lives. And nothing will do us harm. Is it not written? That we shall trample upon serpents, upon scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt us. We banish death tonight in the name of Jesus. We step into grace. We step into mercy. We step into the anointing. We step into empowerment. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for seven is the number you walk with. Hallelujah. 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 Father, open heavens. And let your glory come down upon your children now. Let it descend. 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 Holy Spirit, release that heavy anointing for the end time revival. Promise for this 14 local government where we are standing. God, thank you for the wisdom you gave to your son, Apostle Aramon Usai, and Shara Oka coming together, and all the pastors. Lord, I commit them into your hands. And I pray that. Father, you will fence them with the walls of fire. Yeah. And the angels with their family, yeah. their ministry, yeah. that no power will divert their attention. Yeah. The message they receive from you for revival, end time revival, and the prophecy of power. Let that fire begin to burn. Amen. From the first day of this week, I mean last week, to the seventh day today, fulfill your word. Amen. Fulfill your word. Amen. Anybody that is here that is fearing death, is fearing Satan, Steve, by the new birth he has, God visit the person this night. Yeah. I break the power of the spirit of fear, yeah. doubt, and unbelief. Yeah. I'm worried. Yeah. And no one among them that has attended this meeting, plus those who have gone back outside. God, I cover them with the blood of Jesus. They will never die young. They will never not die young. No accident in their lives. No plane crash. No vehicle accident. They will never die in sickness. They will never backslide in sickness. God, what you did with the apostles of Jesus Christ do with us yeah. and use us with that fire. Yeah. Deliver us from confusion, yeah. misunderstanding, yeah. division, yeah. backbiting, yeah. and gossiping, yeah. love of the world, yeah. and love of money. You have given us money. Jesus said the love of money is mammon. You can't serve God and serve mammon. Plenty money will come. Let us control money. 
The money will never control us. <laughs> Deliver us from the power of mama. <laughs> you give us trillions <laughs> for your work. <laughs> and I commote your servants who are going up and down, flying in the air, walking on the road. Father, if the angels you gave them are not enough, I pray that, oh God, you increase the angels today. <laughs> In their homes, uh, when they are going, Amen. Father, from today, this is the seventh day of this conference. Let the power of the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father and the Son Jesus rest upon your servant who are going about. Amen. Just like Apostle Aaron prayed for other people here that the dead will be raised. The dead will be raised. No miracle will I mean, resist them. No demons will resist them Amen. because Holy Spirit, you are in them doing the work. Lord Jesus, we are in them doing the work. The work. Lord, thank you for everything that you have done in this meeting. I pray that the budget that has gone for this meeting, you will multiply a new budget into millions of thousands in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for the door has been opened for our support. And the partners, Lord, touch them and give them more money so that they will give. We give you the glory, Father. We give you honor. Receive the anointing. Receive the anointing. Receive the anointing. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen and amen.